The second subtopic within uh, wave phenomena is that I'm going to talk to you at least about is Doppler effect. Uh, Doppler effect is uh, what happens with sound when something is moving. You might have experienced this if you ever, uh, I don't know if you ever watch, you know, a car race, for example, maybe you watch Formula One on TV and, uh, you know, you, you hear the, the car coming towards and it goes like as it passes by. Or maybe you've heard this, uh, yeah, if you just have someone honking their horn as they drive by. Now the sound itself, did you notice it sort of goes down in, in pitch, what we call. Um, so it goes, you know, from and as it goes away, the sound itself doesn't keep rising. It's going to be a constant positive pitch as it comes towards you. And as it passes by, it'll be a lower pitch, but constant. Okay, so in other words, as it drives by you, it'll go, you know, if this, this here represents uh, frequency here, uh, let's say this here is frequency, and this is time, maybe it does this, whoops in a French there. So frequency, it would, you know, drive by, it would be high pitch, and then as it passes you, it goes lower. So it would be something constant high, and then something constant lower. I'm going to erase this because it's a horrible diagram. But uh, what I'm going to show you is um, a little bit about um, how we can use this in order to predict what the frequency of sound we're going to hear. So um, I'm going to show you one of the examples. There's two different situations you can have. You can have where you're standing still and the source of the sound is coming towards you or away from you, as that's called moving source. Or you could have it where the source is still and you're sort of running towards the source or away from the source. That also uh, will change the pitch of the sound that you're going to hear. So I'm going to give you just uh, one example, which is going to be for moving source. But a similar situation happens for moving observer. But if we have a moving source, let's just say, um, here we go, here's my source. My source is this X. So this source is actually um, giving out sound. So in other words, it's going like this. But the thing is, the source is actually moving. Let's say my source is going this way. Maybe it's going to the right. Okay, now I'm going to have over here, I'm going to have an observer. This is going to be you listening or detecting the signal here. Maybe you have a recorder or something. So the observer is over here. The moving source is over here. So maybe I'll say source. This is the thing emitting the sound. So we're going to say that the sound is going to go out with this sort of wave in order to try to draw this. You'll see in a second what I mean. Now as this thing moves though, of course, it's already emitted other waves that have gone out. So what happens is as it's moving, it's like these little circles catch up to the other ones. Now if I draw it right, I should be drawing a nice circle still. These should still be circles. Everything should still be a nice circle. It's just that it's like you've taken um, one circle and another, you know, bigger radius circle, but you took the middle one and squished it, you know, and then you took the other one and squished it. So what ends up happening is it's emitting these, these you know, circles of sound, except it's going, let's say, towards, um, well, in this case, this way. So that means then its, its little circles are running into and catching up with the other circles, whereas back here, there's a bigger space between them. So this space right here would represent uh, the wavelength. So this right here. That would be the wavelength right here, the distance from here to here. By the way, it should be the same here. You can see I haven't done a very good job of drawing it. This wavelength should be the same as that one. And over here then, do you notice this is another wavelength here? Do you notice what happened? As you're coming closer, the wavelength of the ones in front are smaller than the wavelengths behind. In other words, the lambdas right here are smaller in front of the source as they are behind. So what we can say then is that, um, let's say, so the wavelength is smaller in front. But do you remember the wave equation? This is this equation I told you should be your friend. So if the speed of sound is the same, if we have the wavelength is smaller in front, well, that means then that the frequency will be higher. 
And that's because wavelength and frequency work opposites to each other. You know, if I make this smaller, if I make wavelength smaller, and I want the speed to be the same, it means if I make wavelength smaller, I have to make f bigger. So this explains why the frequency of sound is going to be higher. And uh, that, in a, in a physical sense, is going to be why you hear the higher pitch. So let's say this is a car driving towards me. I'm the observer, there's the car, and the person driving the car is really annoying. They're driving towards me with some sort of uh, speed here. And we're actually going to call it US. I'll explain that in a second. Not like USA, you know, but uh, uh, you know, uh, that's the speed of the source. Uh, I have a friend of mine, every time I mention the US, uh, he always just starts chanting USA, USA. I'm not American, so I don't do that. But um, what I can do then is take a look at an equation that helps us to predict all of this. Okay, so this is actually the equation for uh, a moving source, and it goes like this. Um, F primed equals F times, and it goes V over, and then from here we have uh, an effect here. It goes V plus or minus US. Okay, now you're probably thinking USA, USA. That's my friend Justin who lives in the US, so um, he insists on always chanting whenever there's a chance to. But this one right here then, let's define what these different uh, things mean. So um, F primed is the um, observed frequency. So that's going to be measured in hertz. F is going to be the emitted frequency. Maybe I'll say F-R-E-Q for short here. That's also going to be in hertz. V is going to be the speed of sound. So however fast sound goes. Now the speed of sound, you might just say, why don't we just keep that a constant? You know, I mean, isn't the speed of sound always the same? Nope. The speed of sound changes depending on all sorts of factors, like your altitude, but even uh, the temperature. So speed of sound is different depending on where you are. Um, on Earth, at sea level, it's around 330 meters per second. A nice easy way for me to remember that is I always think speed of sound is 333. It's close enough. And it all depends on the temperature and the pressure and what's going on. But speed of sound is roughly 333 meters per second. Now, uh, US, that's the speed of the source. That's why we put a little S at the bottom of it. And that's going to be in meters per second. So what this does is this allows us to calculate um, what the observed frequency will be. Now, the question might be, when do we use a plus and when do we use a minus? A nice easy way I like to, uh, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother memorizing which one you do when. What I like to do is just suggest to students, you know what, take a look and think about it. Think about if I add a number, will I make this frequency higher or lower? Because you should be able to think about it just from what you've experienced in everyday life, that if you're an observer and this thing is coming towards you, you expect the frequency to be higher. You know, the one that you observe, it should seem higher. So you should either add or subtract something on the bottom here in order to make it higher. And if you think about fractions, if I want to make, you know, um, if I want to make this larger, then you might think, well, I want to make either that larger or that larger or this smaller. So in this case, then it would be V minus US. That's what we do if it's coming towards you. If it's going away from you, that would be the uh, opposite. So then I have a plus right? because I want the frequency to actually get um, in this case, uh, lower. I want a lower value. And dividing by a larger number gives you a lower value. So that would be what if my observer, instead of over here, I was over here. Right? I would hear the sound, it would sound lower pitch. So basically, you can use this equation right here to tell you if you should do a plus or a minus just by thinking about um, what the observed frequency should be. If something's coming towards you, it should be higher. If something's going away from you, it should be lower. Right? So then you can actually work it out and sort of figure out what you should do. There's a similar equation in your data booklet for a moving observer. Um, 
but the, it works in a similar way. That's why I thought if I show you this way and explain what everything means, you should be okay. Uh, so that is Doppler effect. Now there is a, an analogy with light. Uh, some people say, oh, Doppler effect works with light. Not precisely. Um, some people still call it the Doppler effect for light. I don't know if that's really, a, I don't think it's a, a very accurate term, but there is some sort of analogy where if something is going away from you though, the, um, for a, a different reason, it turns out that uh, you know, when we look at the universe expanding, for example, um, we can actually see some sort of you know, light version of Doppler effect. So that means that uh, when we see things going away from us, um, they're, they're spectral lines. If we take the light and split it up into a, you know, uh, using a prism of some kind, um, we can actually see the spectral lines will all seem shifted a little bit towards the red. In other words, larger uh, wavelengths. So we say it's red shifted. And uh, anybody who knows about astrophysics, at least, we know that red shifted things mean things are going away. And if the lines are blue shifted, it means they're coming towards us. It's something sort of kind of like what happens with uh, sound here, with the Doppler effect. So just explain a bit about the context. But this is the basics of what you need to know for Doppler effect.